scientist Karen Ross is sent by her father in law, Margot Abbey Travis, to the Congo to determine the whereabouts of his son's missing diamond hunting team. Led by expert guy Kelly, Ross and a mismatch search party, including primatologist Elliot, Peter Elliot, Hunter, Herkimer, Hamolka, Hamolka, and a gorilla, discover a danger far more sinister than anything they expected to find, even in the heart of the jungle. Right. Oh, what's that? What's that doing there? Go away. <laughs> right. Hey, up. It's Steve uh, from the Old Yorkshire Geek. Uh, welcome to Magnificent Mondays, the show where I we look we look at a film that I really like. So that's basically it. Um, blah, 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 blah. This week we're doing Congo. What episode are we up to? Number thirty-six. This week we're doing Congo. Uh, not the Umbongo Congo, <laughs> the song that I know all the way through. The Americans watching don't know what I'm talking about. It's a soft drink, but already we've got uh, we've got uh, Win Grace in the chat, and we've got Josh Temple in the chat. Have I got a bad echo? Oh, crikey! Um, on the intro, not your. All oh, right, so there were an echo. That weird. Why? Why would there be an echo? Oh, I tell you, Streamyard is uh, hopeless sometimes. I wonder why there were an echo. It's just a video that I've just played. Bizarre. Anyway, whatever. Whatever. Um, um, Wind Grace is here, and so is Just Temple, as I said. So, welcome to the show. As I said, we're doing Congo. Uh, but before we start, don't forget, like and subscribe, share the videos, drop a comment. What's my microphone doing all funny? Uh, drop a comment, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed already. Uh, right, we're live on YouTube, yes we are, we're live on Rumble, yes we are, and we're live on Twitch, yeah, I still don't know why I keep doing Twitch, <laughs> but uh, anyway, right, so, uh, later on I'll upload it to Spotify, Amazon Music Podcasts and Google Podcasts, uh, hang on, I'm just reaching for my books, because I haven't plugged my books for a, a while, I've uh, oh, moved them out of the way, Damn, I'm so disorganised. Uh, I'm also on Facebook, X and Instagram, links in the description, as are the links to my two books, Mercury Rapids, A Lighthearted Sci-Fi Action Adventure, about UFOs and stuff like that, and Silent Predator, a short horror novella about big cats eating people in a North Yorkshire village, it's all good fun, put them back, uh, that's what we're watching tonight, Congo, on my DVD, so there we go, uh, I haven't got it on Blu-ray, I've got it on DVD though. Uh, put that round there. Right. Uh, are we actually watching Congo? Is this a joke? And it'll just break down a completely different film. I was tempted. <laughs> but no, we're doing Congo. We're doing Congo. I mean, if it if it were going to be an April Fool's joke, I'd have done like Godzilla versus Kong or something like that. <laughs> Godzilla X, something new. But um, no, we're doing Congo. Right, so, uh, is that it? Are we off? Right, Congo. Information about the film Congo. It was released in 1995. It was directed by Frank Marshall, uh, produced by Kathleen Kennedy and Sam Mercer, um, starring Laura Linney, uh, Dylan Walsh, Ernie Hudson, uh, Grant Heslov, uh, Joe Don Baker, Tim Curry, and many, many more. Um, it's the film about a talking gorilla, but, you know, it's it's not. Uh, it's a great adventure film. It harkens back to the old adventure movies of the 30s and 40s and serials and stuff like that. Uh, written uh, based on the book by Mal Michael Crichton. Um, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. It had a budget of $50 million, uh, which was not insubstantial back in 1995. Uh, and its box office was $152 million, which surprised me. I thought it didn't do well at the box office, but uh, it, it did quite well. So. So there you go. But it was critically panned and it was, it was nominated for several Razzies. Um, I don't know if it won any. But uh, anyway, so it's a, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a good film. I, I don't know why it gets a, a, a lambasting. Well, I do. <laughs> the talking gorilla thing. Kathleen Kennedy, she probably wasn't around much. Um, well, I've got a, I've watched a documentary. There's a documentary on YouTube, which I've put the link in the description, and um, apparently she was about a bit. Uh, she was there, uh, but anyway, 
apparently it were her idea to get Stan Winston in to do the, the apes and um, what else was it? There was something else that were her idea as well. I can't remember what. It, the film might have been her idea uh, to do that. I don't know. But uh, she actually did some producing on this one, not just making coffee, apparently. Right. So, anyway, let's get on with the film. As usual, I'll not just be um, playing the film because I'll get into trouble for that. We'll be watching it in a series of stills. I might play the odd snippet. Hopefully we won't get a copyright strike like I did for Morgan on Friday. But thankfully that got blocked worldwide by Fox. Uh, but that's now been lifted. There's still the copyright claiming, but um, the the um, it's not blocked anymore. So we'll see what happens with that. See if they lift the claim entirely. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, why Grifting. Um, there's the super thanks button and the super chat button and all that. If you want to throw some money in my direction, it would be greatly appreciated. And all that jazz. Right, I make myself titty tiny. Um, now then, what do I need to press? Is it that one? Yes, it's that one. And now I've got to go to... Oh, where are we? Where are we? Where have I put it? That one. So people can read the subtitles. Right. Right, that's that sorted. And what else What else have I got to do? Oh, ah, yes, I just remembered. Yes, I've restarted my um, Patreon page. I've republished it, so that's up and running again, is my Patreon page. The link's in the description for that as well, I think. Anyway, um, so where are we? There's my shout-out to my Patreons. I've only got one Archmage Frey, that mysterious man from Twitch. <laughs> But maybe I'll get some more. I've been uploading my, my uh, Friday night appointment with fears up to my Patreon page, but I've made them available to for everyone to view. You know, not not paid members because you can watch them on YouTube. So I didn't, didn't think it was right to make them behind, put them behind a paywall. But I put them up there just in case. Uh, you know, I get another copyright strike or whatever. Um, uh, yes, your Patreon is top of the list on the description. Cool, cool. I couldn't remember if it were there or not. Right, anyway. Right, uh, and that one as well. I've been doing banners today. <laughs> oh dear. As well as April Fool's videos. Right, let's get on with this film. Right, let's get this going. Right, so let's let me, uh, so let me get ready. Did, 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 did. Right, off we go. A blank screen. Hopefully the Paramount logo will appear. There it is. The good old Paramount logo. Off it goes. I've disabled the full stop key. <laughs> Remember on Morgan, I kept bloody hitting the full stop key. Um, you know, for the use for like skipping, you know, advancing frames and stuff like that, backwards and forwards. And the full stop key was the stop button. And I kept hitting that because I'm ham-fisted. Um, so I've disabled that now. Uh, so hopefully there'll be no no shenanigans, fingers crossed. Anyway, so off we go. The uh, good old Paramount logo. By the way, does a, a Indiana Jones, almost an Indiana Jones type dissolve uh, into the uh, African um, savannah. I nearly said tundra then. Uh, African savannah. So here we go. By the way, Although this film is called Congo, it wasn't actually filmed in the Congo. Most of it were actually filmed in uh, in America, in California, in Simi Valley, and at uh, Paramount Studios st um, stages, sound stages. Uh, for the volcano scenes that we see later on, they went to Central America for that. Uh, and I think they sent out like a second unit crew to get like shots in like Tanzania and Kenya and places like that. Um, uh, you know, there for like establishing shots and stuff like that, uh, such as this one, for instance. I bet this is like Tanzania or somewhere or Kenya, or is it Kenya? I don't know. Uh, there's some ostriches, uh, and they're they're not ostriches because I don't think ostriches can climb. They look like um, herons or storks or whatever. Maybe they've got babies with them. I don't know. Congo. Not the best title there. I could do that. <laughs> that would be a title of one of my videos or the that this um, thumbnail. But anyway, whatever. Off we go, and we see some cars racing across this. I'm going to say the Serengeti, because Toto's playing in the background on their 
well, 1995, it'll be a cassette player in the car, won't it? I imagine maybe. Maybe if they've got top-notch stuff, it might be a CD player. Anyway, so here we go. There's some giraffes. It's a giraffe. Uh, yes, that's almost Microsoft Word clip art. It is, isn't it? <laughs> that sounds like something I'd do. On my website. Anyway, so here we go. Views of um, native people in... Um, uh, it's supposed to be the Congo. It's obviously all in French because it used to be the Belgian Congo, didn't it, way back in the day? Uh, Serengeti, the most shoehorned word ever in a famous song. Uh, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, was it Kilimanjaro rises like an empress above the Serengeti? Is it empress? I don't know. I don't know the words. I've never seen, I've never looked at the lyrics, but that's how, how I always heard it. Anyway, there we go. Uh, the volcano of Virunga, because they're going to the Virunga region of the Congo, which apparently is a real place. Uh, porters, 350 francs per day. So there you go. I don't know what 350 Congolese francs is worth. I don't know. Anyway. So here we go. There we see said porters. Uh, and this is where we're meeting. Uh, but I think this is Bruce Campbell. See, me and Bruce Campbell um, in a... Uh, was it Olympus? I always, I always thought it said Empress. Uh, so it was Kilimanjaro has like Olympus above the... I suppose it makes more sense, doesn't it? But I always thought Empress, you know, giving it some majesty. But uh, whatever. <laughs> I think my line's better, Toto. What do you know about lyrics? <laughs> anyway, where were we? Uh, Bruce Campbell's here with his team. We learned they're from Travicom, which is a communications company. There we go. They're off to the... Uh, that's supposed to be, you know, the Virunga volcano, but it's not. It's um, somewhere in uh, Central America. Uh, what's that there? <laughs> is, that supposed, is that just a vine hanging down there? Or is it something that's not supposed to be there? Have a look. Uh, well, something there, isn't it? Maybe it's a vine. Mount Makenko, that's what it's called. Uh, let's see where it was actually filmed. Uh, I've seen it somewhere. Where have I seen it? I can't be bothered looking. It's somewhere in Central America. Right. So, they're going there. Here we go. There they are, setting up camp. Uh, a diverse crew, it seems. <laughs> um, and then we see there's a, a satellite emerges, uh, obviously in space, uh, with the Travicom logo. In the 90s, satellites always had the big logo of the, the, the firm that put them in orbit. Do they still do that? The like Starlink satellites have the SpaceX or, um, or Starlink logo on. I don't know. I've never noticed. But they always did, didn't they, in the 90s? They always had big telling us who, who they owned. Um, so we're learning that um, Bruce Campbell, who plays... Don't ask me, I can't remember. Uh, Bruce Campbell, where are you? Did, did, did. Where is it? Where is it? He's way down the um, there he is. He's way down the uh, credits list. For some reason, big name actor Bruce Campbell. Maybe he wasn't in 1995. I don't know, but he's now in it. As Charlie Travis, the son of the owner of Travicom, he's getting in touch. Um, so this is where we're meeting uh, Laura Linney, the lovely Laura Linney, who we saw recently, didn't we, on Friday Night Apartment with Fear in um, 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 The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Uh, I like Laura Linney. Uh, she plays Karen Ross, Dr. Karen Ross, ex-CIA agent, and now working for Travicom. Uh, and she's also the fiancé of Charlie Travis, uh, the Bruce Campbell character. Right, so here we go. So he's, he's getting in touch from darkest Africa. Um, but it's probably not. It's probably, like say, it's probably somewhere in California. It just looks like the jungle. Um, and this is where we're learning that he's found um, diamonds and stuff. Because um, they need these diamonds for this communication satellite, for whatever reason. I'm sure in the book, which I've not read... Um, I'm sure in the book um, it goes into detail because it's Michael Crichton and it's all about the science in it, even if it is a bit botched sometimes, but uh, I'm sure it's in there. Uh, so 
got the, oh, he's going to demonstrate this diamond that he's putting this laser thing for some reason. It's supposed to be some communication device, but it also doubles as a, yeah, a nice laser gun. Are you ready? Pew! There's communications, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, this movie was just after The Adventures of Briscoe County was cancelled and before Xena started. Yeah, okie dokie. You know what? I never saw him. I never saw his Briscoe County series. Never saw that. I saw him in Moontrap, though. Great film. <laughs> anyway, so they're all happy. Um, they lose contact for whatever reason. Um, satellite moves out or whatever. They lose contact. Right, so we go back uh, to to the Congo, and this chap has found something, and but he's got to go swimming. So here he goes. I'll go first. Wee. So they've got to go swimming, um, and he's he's found something. There we go. The lost a lost city. Look, uh, which the production designer kind of based on um, uh, Angkor Wat, which is in Cambodia. It's not based on the architecture. But the way it's all overgrown and the way the jungle has taken over it, and there's like buildings with trees growing out of them, stuff like that. Uh, he based it on that. Uh, but anyway, he's found something, and uh, it's uh, you know it's all cool and all that. They're all excited. Anyway, I don't know if I missed something. I think he is a scream. I think uh, something happens. He goes disappearing in there, and. Um, no, oh, maybe not. Might be later. Uh, right, he's arrived. This is Joe Don Baker. You know he's going to be a baddie. Even though, even when he's a goodie in films, he's seems like a baddie, doesn't he? <laughs> but he's, he's not nice in this. He's the owner of Travicom. Um, oh, there we go. Back to Congo again. And I think we're gonna. I think he's gonna. Something's gonna happen to him now. He's waiting. That's it. He's waiting for his friend to come back. From their discovery. So he's going to sit and eat a chocolate bar. Then something throws something at him. There you go. He looks round, picks it up. What? What is What is being thrown at him? And he has a look. And it, I'd have known straight away. I wouldn't have like, had to look at it like that. You know, a bloody eyeball. But if you notice, look. He's holding it in his fingertips there. But uh, when it cuts to there, it's in the palm of his hand. Turn it off. <laughs> It's his friend's eyeball, and then he turns round, something rushes him, and he screams, ah, thusly. Right, so they wait for the satellite to get into position again so they can get back in touch with base camp, and there's, there's no answer or whatever, so they turn on the camera, and they pan around, and they see everybody's dead, as you can see. There you go. Everybody's dead. Lots of uh, dead people. There you go. I can see seven dead people. Um, what's his face? I forgot his name now. Haley Joel Osmond, he could see several dead people, couldn't he? He <laughs> uh, says, what's that sound? And then something attacks the camera. Here we go, there it is. Uh, oh, they see another dead person there. Something attacks the camera and knocks it over. Um, oh, seeing a dead person there. But they can't see Charlie. Remember, Charlie's his son. And... Um, um, Karen's fiance, but they can't see him, so there's there's a chance that he may still be alive. Uh, anyway, something knocks the camera over. They say they lose lose the signal, and uh, they wonder what's going on. Anyway, so it's decided. There you go. She says, "I didn't see him, Charles." Um, lucky the camera didn't get knocked over. It does it. Like I say it just has been. <laughs> It just has been by uh, an unknown thingy-ma-bob. Uh, see if I can see. We, we see a blur attack the camera. Uh, thusly. There we go. Something attacks the camera. Uh, right. So, uh, she's going to go on a mission now um, to look for Charles, Charlie. But um, the boss of Travicom, what's his name anyway? Uh, R.B. Travis, his name. R B. Um, he 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 wants her to go for the diamond. Uh, you know, it, it, it's like he doesn't even care about his son. But uh, she says to him, "He says, what was that thing? A gorilla?" Um, 
I think he was saying he needs those diamonds because it's the future of his company. He's sunk everything into this research. And then uh, she says to him, you know, if if, if she ever thinks that he's, she's, he's sent her into the Congo just to get some diamonds, um, you know, she'd, she'd make him pay, which is what we come back to later. So anyway, right, so is, she's going to go into the... Uh, the Congo. Right, then we cut to some university somewhere. Maybe it says, I don't know. But, uh, oh, there we go, Berkeley, California. Um, and uh, we're going to meet Amy, the talking gorilla. And she's also an artist, better than me. <laughs> she does paintings as well. Uh, a really clever gorilla. Uh, but Wingrace says, diamonds are shinier than children. Yes, they are. Right. So it's where we meet Grant Heslov. Uh, he's running round after Amy. Um, uh, there he is. And, and um, helping her with some painting as well. Um, Grant Heslov, you may know from that, uh, what we're in. Um, True Lies and what else has he been in? I can't remember, but other stuff as well. Um, He's the uh, assistant to uh, Dylan Walsh's character, Peter Elliott, who's named, the character's named after um, the real-life Peter Elliott, who, who did a lot of uh, ape choreography in films like Greystoke and this. Um, you know, he, he did, does a lot of ape stuff. Uh, named after him. Uh, in, in, in Amy, uh, obviously Amy is not a real gorilla, <laughs> uh, but in Amy we have two uh, actors... Or actresses. Uh, we've got, uh, it says here somewhere, where are we? Uh, Lola No and Misty Rosas, uh, the in suit performers of Amy. Uh, Misty Rosas, uh, or is it Rosa? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, played, I forgot his name now. <laughs> Gives me a cue in um, The Mandalorian, The Ugnaught, I forgot his name, but uh, she played that. That character. Anyway, so there we go. There's Amy. Uh, all happy to see Peter. Uh, then we cut to um, some lecture hall and Peter's demonstrating his, his work with Amy and uh, talking about communications. You know, it's what separates humans from animals. We can communicate and animals can't. Well, not like we do. Uh, but then he's... Um, Talking about sign language, uh, people who can't talk, who don't have the ability to speak and learn sign language. As we've seen on a, a video, some chap who's never been able to speak is using a setup developed by this chap. Um, uh, maybe it's Richard Daystrom, I don't know. <laughs> uh, speaking of Star Trek, we're going to see a Star Trek actress in a minute. But anyway, uh, developed by this chap to the movements of his hand. Uh, is translated into speech in the computer. So this fella's amazed. And it's the, the first time I've heard my voice, but it's a bit like um, um, Stephen Hawking. <laughs> uh, yes, it's the M5 <laughs> computer. It's all going to go awry. Oh, dear. Anyway, so there we go. Uh, oh, I will meet, um, is it Mary Ellen Trainer? She's all, it's in a lot of Richard Donner films for some reason. Um, she's there. Uh, she's, got, she's in this film for like two seconds and she's got quite a high billing for some reason. I don't know why, but anyway. But uh, they're watching on. And then we're going to get introduced to Amy. Here comes Amy. Uh, what they call Grant Heslov's character? I don't know, I've forgotten. Richard, there we go. Uh, Richard brings uh, Amy in down the, uh, the aisle. She's brought him some flowers, which gets repeated near the end of the film as well. Uh, she loves to show that she loves him. There we go. Another Star Trek actress there. Carolyn Seymour. We saw several times in Star Trek The Next Generation. But I mostly remember her as the Romulan commander in Face of the Enemy. Um, in that, that episode. So there we go. Uh, but she's been other, other characters as well. Uh, but they've all got... Um, they've all got names. They've all got names in the cast list. But... I said, we'd never learn. I mean, this is the only time we see him. Uh, where are we? Um, Mary Ellen Trainer as Moira um, and uh, Carolyn Seymour as Eleanor Romy. 
Were the characters in the book? I have no idea, but they've got na names. I presume bio uh, biographies as well, but anyway. Right, so Amy's talking. She's doing a sign language, uh, which I think has been done in real life, hasn't it? I think there's been experiments with, um, I don't know, chimps or gorillas or whatever that can do sign language um, to a certain degree. And Amy can as well. She, can, she knows her age and she knows she's a gorilla and that. So she's self-aware, I suppose. They're amazed. It's a talking gorilla. Um, but uh, anyway, and then we cut to this view. Uh, we could see the audience. Uh, then we can see Carolyn Seymour. Can't see Mary Ellen Trainer anywhere. But who's that there? Somebody watching from the middle of the room. Uh, that's Tim Curry as uh, um, oh, I forgot Ham Hamulka, Hamulka, or whatever the bloody hell they call him. Uh, anyway. Right, so there you go. Amy wants lunch, so they're all amazed. He's amazed, but he's more amazed at um, there we go, at um, Amy's paintings. He's got this ring with an eye on it, and he's uh, he's going to look. He's looking at Amy's paintings. There we go. Uh, and then Amy's. Then we cut to um, hang on, where are we? Space. What are you saying that for? I don't know. I've said something, haven't I? <laughs> Oh dear. Uh cuts to one of Amy's paintings. Um um oh, well, we, and then it then we're in a dream. Amy's having a dream. She sees an eye and then a uh, monkey it looks like my teeth. My teeth and then Amy's eyes and then she wakes up. Uh she's had a nightmare. Um and then the looks he looks round and he decides that her room is now starting to look like the jungle. And she wants to go home. So he just decides, right, we'll take her home then. Uh, I don't know what the uh, university would have to say about that, but uh, uh, we're going to find out because this chap, oh, what's his name now? He was in Return of the Living Dead and all that, wasn't he? And, um, and other things. Uh, oh, dear. Can't remember his name. James Caron, that's it. James Caron. Um that's a really over-the-top Tim Curry quote, is it? All oh, right. <laughs> Did he say space? I can't remember. Was it in Rocky or a picture show or something? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. Thankfully, he don't put stockings and suspenders on in this film. Not that well, not that we know, unless they're under his clothes. Anyway, so... He wants to take Amy home and... The college president saying, you know, this amazing work you're doing, you could ask for any amount of money, but he says, I want to take her home. And then um, here he is. What the bloody cat? What the call him now? I can never. Her Herkerma Hamulka, that's it. Or Herkerma. Herkerma Hamulka. <coughs> oh, me. He appears uh, with his amazing Romanian accent. Hang on, I'll, uh, we'll listen to him speak, shall we? Where are we? <laughs> oh, I'm bloody unmuted it. For Amy to go home. And who are you, sir? Herkema Homolka, formerly of Romania, free now of the chains of Ceausescu. <laughs> oh, dear. Free of the chains of Ceausescu. Roaming the world, doing humanitarian things. Uh, whatever. Uh, probably doing a... Unlike me, not doing a bad um, um, Bella Lugosi impersonation. There we go. Travelling the world, doing good. Anyway, so he's going to pay to uh, take Amy home. So uh, Peter tells Richard, so have to get packed. Uh, they're taking her home. So they've... Um, her, her, I'll just call him Hamolka. I can't remember his, her, his first name. <laughs> Herkimer. Uh, hires a plane. There we go. Dax, another Star Trek reference. Dax. <laughs> oh dear. Um, and this is where we learn that um, there's a problem with uh, Herkimer's uh, credit flow. See, they're packing, putting everything on board, and suddenly they ta start taking everything off. This is where Karen Ross appears. Um, and um, you know she's saying, you know, can they go with you? Basically, she wants to uh, piggyback on their flight to the Congo. 
uh, then we learn they're taking stuff off and uh, Herkima comes over and uh, says um, there's been a problem with his uh, credit flow and he, um, he can't afford to pay for the fuel bill, which is $56,000. Um, so uh, Karen says, you know, she's obviously going to pay for it because she's got unlimited funds, more or less. So off they go. So she pays for the fuel. So, right, so they're getting ready. And uh, Amy's going to have a... Um, I think once they're in the air, and she's putting her uh, seatbelt on. Um, it's going to give her a drink once they're in the air, I think. But uh, we learn that they don't get on straight away, does um, Peter and Karen, but uh, they do eventually. Right, so they're off. And they're going to give Amy a, uh, a martini because it calms her down. Right, there you go. <laughs> um, and then uh, Hamurka begins talking about the, the notion of the killer ape and all that, and talk from the jungles of, you know, apes killing people. And Peter says, that's a load of nonsense. Eh? You know, gorillas, you know, are, are peaceful and all that stuff. Shaken or stirred, I don't know. They weren't that specific. <laughs> yes, I don't think they were. Anyway. Right, so they're doing a bit more bonding. Um, oh, she's asking, why teach an ape to talk? And he says, well, why not? <laughs> Just because he can. Right, so, anyway, right, so they've arrived in Africa. We know they have because there's a giraffe there. Uh, they've got Central Africa. That's a bit vague, isn't it? <laughs> uh, dear. The Central African Republic or Central African Empire, which were the same country. I think they had some sort of coup. At one point, I don't know. Or is it just Central Africa, wherever? I don't know. Anyway, they've arrived there, and this is where we're going to meet. Uh, oh, this is where we meet uh, Eddie, whatever his name is. Uh, Eddie Ventro, Joe Pantoliano. As um, Eddie Ventro, he's the gopher, the the the, the procurer of uh, whatever they need. Um, there we go. So he's, he's sorting things out for them, all what they need for the expedition. Um, obviously, it's uh, Karen that's uh, brought him on board, you know. And um, um, So he's uh, sorting things out. And as they're driving away, uh, we see that there's a, I think it's a limo, limousine over there, I think. It suddenly explodes. There we go. Right, so. And uh, it was a presidential limousine. So all soldiers start running about. So Eddie starts stamping their visas or passports or whatever um, and gets them out of there before the uh, airport gets locked down. This is where we meet Ernie Hudson as Munro Kelly, the, um, their guide into the, uh, into the jungle. Uh, in the book, apparently we're white, uh, but uh, Ernie Hudson plays him here with a, you know, an OK British accent. Right, so... Off the go. Out the go on, uh, of the airport. And um, uh, and apparently it's the... Uh, oh, well, he's, uh, he introduces himself. Karen Ross Munro Kelly. I'm your great white hunter for this trip. But I happen to be black. That's how he speaks. And um, we learn that it's the gorilla that's going to get him out of there because you know nobody wants to be seen hurting a gorilla. Uh Anyway, so off they go. Um, all right, he looks at um, uh, Hamurka and he says, uh, you know, have we met before? And he says, oh, possibly, I travel a great deal. Uh, but he does know him because we learn later on that he does know him and he should know him by sight after what they went through. But anyway. So, right, so off they go. Um, um, Munro Kelly tells uh, Peter that, uh, you know, He's in better hands than he, he should be, uh, thanks to, you know, Karen Ross and her money, or the company's money. Right, so, uh, they've arrived at some sort of checkpoint um, with, uh, let me show him, uh, this chap, there we go. That's Kevin Grievous, who's a, uh, does a lot of writing, but he's got a really deep, gravelly voice. Um, I don't know if you hear him speak in this, but... Um, 
I know him from Underworld. He played um, played one of the werewolves in Underworld. He also co-wrote that, by the way. Uh, the Kate Beckinsale film. Um, anyway, so that's him. Uh, right, so they all get detained. They're all in uh, some some area, being questioned. And poor Richard, he, he hates being there. He's terrified, obviously. And um, he goes, he says, "This is pure Kafka." He goes, "Who is Kafka? Tell me." It's all very uh, amusing. But anyway, they end up going to speak with um, this chap, some general. I don't know his name. Does it say? Does it say? Just bear with me. Uh, I don't know. Is it him? Is it? Is it? Is it Captain Wanter? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, he's in charge. Anyway, he hasn't been promoted to general yet. Don't look like it, does it? Uh, so. Getting to know them. Uh, eating his, uh, he's eating his sesame cake. <laughs> uh, and this is where he's uh, saying that, uh, you know, she used to work for the CIA, now she works for Travicon. Why are they going, you know, into, into the Congo? Um, but, uh, and, you know, she says, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's my business. So she said... It's, Basically, she's got to pay them lots of money, bribe them, because uh, they're going to need men as well, because it's all the, the whole country's going to hell, because apparently it was an assassination attempt for the president, but he wasn't in the, the limo. And so it's all going, it's all going, um, oh, there we go. Bloop, the president's Mercedes. Uh, so it's all going uh, tits up in that country. Uh, so anyway, so... There you go. Oh, Captain. So he must be Captain... Um, what's his face? I forgot already. <laughs> Captain Wanter. Pretty bad. Delroy Lindo. Uh, oh, it is, yes. An English-American actor. There we go. Um, so basically, got to uh, pay loads of money. So here we go. Gives a nudge. So she puts a wad of cash. Or gives uh, Munro Kelly a wad of cash. It says, more... There you go. So they'll give him some more money. Don't know how much money she's carrying about. But um says, right, okie dokie. And then he tells Hamurka, stop eating my sesame cake. <laughs> so he spits it out. And uh, apparently he's, he's got a reputation, you know, and uh, he doesn't doesn't like uh, Hamurka. But uh, anyway. There you go. This fellow is a big bag of shit. But anyway, oh wow, this fella's, uh, this soldier's feeling her hair. She gives him a little nudge in the ghoulies. Like that. So anyway, and this is where we learn that um, it's, it tells them, you know, it's the gorilla that's going to save their lives and get them through because nobody wants to be seen on American television hurting a gorilla. Uh, I suppose we can thank um, um, Sigourney Weaver, can't we? Gorillas in the mist for that. Anyway, right, so off the go. They're heading out. There you go, they're free to go. And they're heading out now. With a military escort now. Oh. Uh, into the uh, uh, the wilderness. But then they get to a plane. Right, so they've got a plane now. Uh, obviously, giraffes keep showing us the wildlife. <laughs> uh, there's Amy. Oh, and they're all joking about Peter and Amy. Husband and wife. Ha, ha, ha. They're all laughing. It's all very amusing. And he says, I think that's on uh, on my account, so to speak, or aimed at me. There we go, at my expense. Um, but, uh, right, so they're packing up. Oh, it's where we learn that um, Hamurka is looking for the lost city of Zinjan, King Solomon's diamonds, which supposedly they're a mine that he had. Um, you know, the old... Uh, um, what's his face? Um... Alan Quatermain and all that. Um, he was looking for that lost city. And he said, uh, several years ago, uh, I can't remember exactly what it says. It might say here in a minute. Um, where is it? Does it say? Five years ago, five years ago, like, Mr. Hamurka was part of an expedition that uh, lots of people died, uh, it went wrong, and... Um, 
and he ended up being carried out uh, of the jungle by Munro Kelly. So that's probably why he recognises him. Um, he got three members died from exposure and one was shot. Um, and it was an appalling suicide. That's <laughs> how he says it. <laughs> and, uh, so he's pushing him anyway and Hercule nearly... Uh, Hamurka, sorry, not Hercule. Hamoka uh, nearly uses a racial epithet that uh, stops himself. Uh, so we learn where we see that there's no love lost between them two. Uh, Eddie's arrived um, with a, a, ban a plaster on his head. Um, <laughs> a customs guard hit him with a can of peanut oil or something um, for stamping visas. So that could have happened to me because when I went to Egypt with my mate, we had one of these dodgy people came running up and you know, give us ten Egyptian pounds and we'll get you, we'll we'll get your passport stamped or your visa stamped. But yeah, all right then. Anything could have happened. We were idiots, but anyway. Right. So, uh, right. So the, apparently, um, on his list of stuff to get for them, for the for the. Uh, um, expedition was a balloon. He says we don't need the balloon and we don't need the home entertainment system. Um, so, so they're not having that. Uh, but by the end of the film, we learn that they should, should have kept the balloon. But never mind. Um, but they're getting everything else, but just not the balloons or the entertainment system. Right, they're off in the Simba air cargo plane. Right, hang on, info. If Sci-Fi Quest were watching this, he'd want to know all about this because he's into his military stuff and planes and all that jazz. <laughs> oh, where is it? I've seen it here somewhere. Where are we? Um, just bear with me. <laughs> oh, where have I seen it? There we go. The DC-3 that flies them into Zaire is a dc one g one O2A, serial number N26MA, is that right? Whatever. Uh, it was built in 1939 and delivered to Penn Central Airways in, uh, in, in 1939. As of 2023, she's still airworthy. So cool, just not in this film because she gets blown up. <laughs> anyway, spoilers. Right, so off they go, they're flying over. It should have been like an Indiana Jones bit here, shouldn't they, showing a, a red line on a map, but they're in. <laughs> right, so hopefully they go flying, uh, I'm presuming this this is in Africa, maybe, I don't know, but uh, it could be, for all I know. Uh, uh, right, so they're giving, uh, they're putting uh, like sedatives in bananas for, uh, for Amy, because I think they suspect what's going to happen is going to happen. So, there we go, putting them. Um, tablets in the bananas um, so they're getting ready to uh, head over the border but as the plane flies over we see a chap with a uh, missile launcher and he fires one at the plane and uh, luckily it doesn't hit the plane it just blows up uh, short of it uh, so let's make sure we're still going did it? Did it? Did it? Yes, we are. We are. And we are. And we are. Right. Uh, here we go. There we go. Oh, press the wrong button. <laughs> press the wrong key again. There we go. By the way, uh, like I said, some good effects in this. ILM did a lot of the. Well, I think they did all the effects. Stan Winston did the apes and stuff. Uh, but not a lot of CG in this film. Um, the CG enhancements. But later on, when we see lava and stuff like that, everybody thinks the lava is real. Uh, not real. Uh, CG lava. But it's not. Uh, I was surprised by that as well when I found that out today. Uh, sorry, because what's the exact model of that weapon? He, he would know. He would know. But uh, I don't think he's here today. Unless he's just watching and not uh, not speaking. <laughs> Because he knows his stuff. He's like my mate. My mate would my mate know all this stuff as well. Um, but anyway. Right, so they're being uh, attacked. Uh, I think it's by the Zaire. And they said, we're viola violating Zaire's airspace. So they're trying to shoot them down. Do you think they just get on the radio to them, wouldn't they? But anyway, it's Africa. Uh, right, so. Um, there we go. Got British pilot there. 
Can be big as a bondo. <laughs> Uh, but the, you know, they keep shooting at them, but Karen, there we go, they're getting chased. I bet, that, that's, I bet that's not in Africa. I bet that's somewhere in California. You know, I bet like the A-team and stuff has been filmed there. <laughs> uh, uh, so Karen's got an idea. She breaks out the, the flare pistols and she opens up the door and uh, this chap fires one and because she's former CIA, she knows how to deflect or whatever. Um surface to air missiles so that's what she's doing here she's fire, firing a flare at it there you go uh, not great composite in there but you know it'll do so then uh, munro kelly i don't know why i've got to say his whole name it's just that's just the way it comes out of my mouth he wants in as well he gets the other flare pistol so they're doing it because uh, they, they must know that they're going to fire two at once which is what they do pew, pew. and uh, there we go so they fire their two flares and get rid of them as well. Uh, but they know that they're going to keep shooting at them, so they're all putting parachutes on. And Peter says, why is everybody putting parachutes on? And Karen says, work it out. Um, so they all get ready to jump out of the plane. And uh, there you go. Peter says, Amy might get hurt. And Kelly, Munro Kelly, sorry, says, uh, you know, I'll take Amy. And um, he say, no, you can't risk it. And Kelly says, do you know how to fly a plane? Because the pilots have already gone. And then we look at the cockpit and there's no, nobody flying the plane anymore. How did they get out? I don't know. We didn't see them go by. But uh, they've obviously jumped out of the plane. So they're dumping all their equipment and people are jumping out of the plane and all the stuff like that. Um, Tim Curry doesn't want to go. He says, push me, please, you know, harder. And so off he goes. Uh, so, right, so they're all jumping out of the planes. Wee! There we go. Uh, all the nice bright red parachutes. And you think the Zaire army would just, just know where they were roughly. They'd just go in and kill them all, wouldn't you? But no, that's not what happens. Um, and they're all, you know, really good at landing. You know, I'd have killed myself and or just drifted off somewhere a million miles away from everybody else because I'm hopeless. But no, they're all fine. Uh, even the gorilla. Right, so here they are. They're all underground and uh, gathering stuff up. And Peter says, "Oh, that's it. I know. I know. I'm. I'm in over my head. You know. Um, I know. I know. You know when to give up. You know. I don't want to be part of this anymore. I'll just take Amy home. You know, back back home." And Munro Kelly says, "Well, I'm leading the safari into the Congo or into the Virunga, or whatever he says. Um, you, if you will, you don't want to come. You know." Go wherever, but this is a damn dangerous place. And people die here very easily. There you go. And uh, so he's like forced to, to go with them. Uh, meanwhile, Amy's looking at a chameleon. Bless her. There you go. Oh, and she's looking at some ants as well. Oh, my ants! Just got to show you a bit. I was watching on the, the making of documentary on YouTube earlier on, and it showed the, the bug wrangler. I thought it was an amazing guy, so I'm going to show you that that clip <laughs> about all the bugs that they use in the film. So just bear with me while this while I remove that and uh, fire up the old. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Uh, it won't be for very long, so hopefully we won't get into trouble for it. Right, so here we go. This is the bug wrangler. The filmmakers incorporated the wildlife of the jungle into the set with the help of bug wrangler Jules Sylvester, who placed a variety of creatures in the undergrowth. If you don't like bugs and snakes, this is a room from hell. <laughs> uh, my job is uh, to keep the jungle alive. I have stuff like this. These are the very large hissing cockroach. If you don't like cockroaches, this thing is one somebody's worst nightmare. I'm going to be putting stuff like that these are millipedes i have half a dozen of those or so they'll be on the buildings that's pretty standard woolly boogers crawling all over buildings i've got a bucket full of giant maggots that i dug out of the manure pile up the back here yesterday you'll stick them in the eyeball up the nose of a dead guy and it's like they crawl around and it just you'll leave the seat that's it <laughs> i love this stuff it's cracking isn't it? i love this stuff Crazy guy, bless him. Uh, right. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. It made me laugh when I watched it earlier on. 
the bug wrangler for the film. Right, back to the film. Right, here she goes. Watching the, uh, I don't know, ants. Are the leaf cutter ants? Because they're carrying leaves about, aren't they? That's probably what they are. Right, off they go. Right, where are they here now? Uh, is this somewhere in California or is this in Central America? I have no idea. Uh, probably California, probably. Uh, oh, this is where Munro Kelly's asking uh, Karen why she left the CIA. She says, oh, I wasn't in the CIA. She says, oh, of course she wasn't, um, etc. Anyway, they're making camp and they've got all the latest equipment, you know, these pop-up tents and air conditioners and all that jazz. Uh, no home entertainment system, though, because she said, don't, we're not taking that. So we're going to have to sing to each other. Um, Monroe Kelly and uh, Hamoka. Is it Hamoka? I forgot. I can't remember. Um, they're having a little, a little chat. Um, but... Um, uh, he's wondering why they're taking the gorilla, you know, and um, why why he's helping uh, Peter with the gorilla. You know, he, he knows he's after the diamonds of King Solomon, but why? Why? What's with the gorilla? And um, I think Hamilka is obviously heard the legend, you know, of the the killer apes in the area. So um, he thinks Amy hey, might be able to get him past them, maybe. But anyway, so. Right, Peter's playing with uh, with Amy. It's time for the vitamins. Meanwhile, Karen's setting up the satellite link back to base, back to RB Travis. There she is, getting talking to him. Pardon me. Uh, telling them that, uh, you know, they're there. They're at base camp, blah, blah, blah. But then, um, um, what's her face? Uh, Amy comes running through. Um... Uh, comes running, running through. Oh, I've learned that the volcano is about to erupt at any moment, by the way. But, um, oh, there we go. And um, Amy goes running by and knocks over the, the satellite thing, dish, whatever. And um, so he's shouting. Um, and it's destroyed. It's destroyed is the satellite dish. So she can't get back through to, to base. So... Um, he sends another expedition to RB, and we see what happens to them later. Right, so it's night time, and all the howler monkeys, is it how No, Columbus monkeys are uh, screaming in the woods, in the jungle. And um, there you go, Columbus monkeys. Because uh, it's a full moon, everyone thinks he's Elvis Presley. There we go. Uh, right, so, anyway, next day, off they go trekking into the jungle it's all muddy as well and it's horrible and it's raining and we had thin rain and we had fat rain and we had rain that come up from the ground lieutenant dan pepsi mother of pepsi can i wasn't even paying attention what's happened there what's that gone off for go away oh dear oh the tent's gone look it's all kicking off because of the elements uh, oh, this chap finds a snake. There we go. Oh, and has killed it, chopped its head off. Because um, it was a snake. <laughs> uh, and there's a frog. I think Amy gets rid of this frog. Yes, she wants to go and I think she wants to drink one of her uh, martinis. I think that's what she's after. Oh, she's after a banana. I can't remember. But um, the, uh, it must be a banana she's after. Anyway. Right. Uh, oh, hi, Peter's got a leech on his willy. And uh, there we go. Um, so he's in st right stand, stand by me. So, uh, um, Monroe kind of gives him his cigarette, tells him to burn it off with that. And um, Anyway. I've never had a leech, so I don't know what they're like. But uh, <laughs> anyway... Oh, they're being watched. That's where we learn that there's the, the ghost, Mizumi, the ghost tribe. We see there's one behind her. You can see it there, you know, out of focus. They're being watched from the uh, the jungle. Um, there they are. So out they come. Um, and they learn that they've got, um, they've found a, a dead person in the jungle who had the same, the Travicom logo on his clothes. And, um, and, um, 
Karen's obviously, you know, shocked at this, a dead person. And um, um, Munro Kelly tells her that uh, with the Mizumi, the different levels of dead, and you're not com not dead until you're completely dead. So, so they go and investigate. There we go. And we, we see that it's... Uh, oh, my, they're, they're singing this. They're doing like a, I don't know, a ritual or whatever. And um, I have to play this. Because <laughs> I've always thought... I nearly pressed... Well, I did. I pressed the bloody... Uh, I was pressing the full stop key there. Good job I turned it off, isn't it? Or disabled that. Let's go back. There we go. I don't know what they're saying, but to me, it sounds like they're saying she gobbled it up. I'll just play it. I'm just going to play it. I hope I don't get a copyright strike for it. I'll have to mute it. So it sounds like to me they're saying, she gobbled it up. She gobbled it up. <laughs> don't know what, but it just sounds like it. <laughs> In a minute. <laughs> oh, come on, get to that bit. <laughs> She gobbles it up. I don't know what they're saying. I presume they're saying something in their own language. But it sounds to me like they're saying she gobbles it up. Whatever that might mean, I don't know. Maybe I've just got a dirty mind. Anyway. Right, so, anyway, they find this chap. They take him to this chap that they found. And uh, he's not dead, there was Bob Driscoll. Uh, who's played by... I'll let you know, because I've forgotten already. Um... Where is it? Where is it? Uh, John Hawke. So you may know it was in uh, from Dust Till Dawn. He played the uh, the star owner slash attendant, whatever, at the beginning of From Dust Till Dawn. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> uh, and, uh, I think it, yeah, it is him. So anyway, so they found him. So they sit him up. We see Amy's coming to have a look. They sit him up, and uh, he sees Amy. There you go, Amy comes lumbering over and he sees Amy and like screams and then promptly dies. Um, there we go. I'll just have seizure or heart attack or whatever. So he's he's properly dead now. Um, when he saw Amy, so that obviously shows that he saw one of the gorillas in the region. Uh, right, so. Uh, right, they're going on the on boats now. They're going by boat. They've uh, given Amy the banana with the dope inside. Uh, oh, and then he starts singing uh, to Amy uh, that song. Is it California Dreaming? Whatever. There we go. Uh, and everybody else starts singing it as well, and it's all lovely, and everybody's friends. And then they're going down white water rafting. There we go. Uh, I don't know where this is. That's it. Again, it's probably California somewhere. Um, and, ooh, look, it's all lovely. Um, oh, her cute... Uh, I forgot his name. I, I can never bloody say <laughs> Her Kerma. Whatever. Tim Curry. He's talking, telling them all about the diamonds that they're going to find, and they're all going to be rich. And um, Anyway... Oh, that's so where he's talking about how we how we learned about you know what they're going to find there, and um, there you go. I, I found a book in Soviet Georgia, and uh, what else does he say? There were a, I think it's got a ring that shows his ring that we saw at the beginning, and uh, also the design of the eye and all that. A detailed drawing of the city of Zinj. Um, but uh, there we go, an open eye. Um, then he's uh, on, there we go, the ring. Shows her the ring. There we go. So it, it's a clue. That's why he's, he needs to find the city. And uh, Amy thinks Amy has seen the gorilla because he shows her the a photo of one of her paintings that she'd done. He thinks she's seen it uh, in, in, her, in her youth. So obviously she was captured from this area when she was a, you know, a little gorilla and brought back. Um... No, we've caught up. <laughs> We're now at the normal time. Uh, we 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 um, what you call it? Sprang forward last night or Saturday night. So anyway, but no, I didn't start early. Uh, you can thank British Summertime for that. But anyway, welcome Joshua Kanapke. Welcome to the show. 
You've not missed much. We're just getting into it. Oh, pardon me. Right, anyway, she's using a super duper technical um, um, GPS system, which was, you know, high tech stuff back in the 90s, wasn't it? But uh, it still is now, I suppose. But uh, um, I've got, she's lost the signal from whatever she was get, picking up a signal from. Anyway, right, so night's falling. They're going across this lake. I oh, can see the, uh, the volcano that they're heading towards. I presume this is all you know, composited map paintings and stuff. Uh, and then they're going to get attacked by hippopotamuses in a moment. Um, Amy's asleep. And uh, hippos are going to start attacking because, you know, as we all know, hippos are the most dangerous animal in the universe. Um, there we go. Ah, this big one here. Uh, these were done by Stan Winston as well. Obviously, they're not real hippos. Uh, but the main one that they use is like a two and a half ton animatronic thing. That's if you watch the documentary that I've linked in the description, it shows it. You know, they had it doing all this amazing stuff, and you hardly see it. Uh, it's ears wiggle and everything. There's all this amazing, and you hardly see because it it's too dark. But yet, when they come to the the stuff that we'll see later, the apes that we'll see later on, uh, Stan Winston wanted them to be lit. Less brightly, shall we say. He was never happy with how we, how they were lit in the film. Uh, but anyway. But anyway. Right. Uh, so I want one of those for Christmas. What one of those GPS things? <laughs> or, or a two and a half ton um, gorilla, uh, hippopotamus. Anyway, the fight off the, uh, the hippos. One fella gets a nasty cut. And then we see a plane flying over. Um... Uh, What's that? A plane, you know. It's basically what I'm trying to like around here when a plane flies over. <laughs> uh, anyway, a plane's flying over, so... And I think they've been taken out by the uh, Zaire Air Force, because I think we see it's got smoke coming out. Here we go. It's got flames coming out of it. So that's going to crash. And we, we, we come across them uh, shortly. Uh, right, they're heading over the uh, over the volcano. There we go. She was born someplace on the other side of this mountain, says Peter. So they're heading out. This isn't in the Congo. This is in Central America somewhere. Don't ask me where. Venezuela. I don't know. Uh, we should put hippos in the Rio Grande and along the border. Yes, they should. Just every, everywhere you need, like you know, to deter people, you just put hippos there. <laughs> Um, a hippopotamus. Oh, it's another one of those annoying Christmas songs. Maybe you didn't get that one over here, over there. Um, no, no. Not well. I don't. I maybe I don't know, but um, I don't know it. I don't know a Christmas song with a hippopotamus in. Anyway, right. So they're heading over the volcano. Right. There you go. She's looking. Oh, it's all lovely. And she's she's looking is uh, Karen, knowing that, you know, Peter loves Amy, but she's got to say goodbye to her. And there we go. We've lost two porters. He's ran away. And Richard says, they didn't invite me, because obviously, remember, he hates it there. But um, anyway, I think I think we get a few rumbles from the volcano. Just to remind us uh, that it's uh, getting ready to erupt. Anyway, so they've arrived at the other side. There go more bugs. Look, I bet uh, that fella from that video. I bet that uh, I bet he popped them there. <laughs> I haven't seen any of the um, millipedes yet. Look out for millipedes. Right, they find the plane. Um, has that just crashed? It looks like it's been there a while, doesn't it? But uh, whatever. Uh, this is the plane that's just crashed the night before. It looks like it's been there for months, doesn't it? Nay, years. But anyway. Uh, apparently, every, I think everybody's dead. Because um, I think I think Munro Kelly comes from the the fuselage and says, "You know, don't go in there." So, but we're not sure. So I'm guessing everybody's dead inside. Um, um, yeah, there's no point going in there. So everybody's dead. Um, and we learn it's another team sent by um, R. B. Travis because when he lost contact. Uh, with Karen earlier on in the film, and Amy knocked over the the satellite dish thing. Um, 
I think he guessed that they're being attacked again, much as, you know, like it happened in the, the first part of the film. Uh, so he sent another team, and obviously they've uh, met a sticky end. Uh, that's the plane slash set from Romance in the Stone, is it? I don't know. You know what? I've never seen that. I've never seen Jewel of the Nile either. That's I've never heard they're amazing, and I've never got round to watching them. I'm going to have to do that, aren't I? We have to get round to watching Romance in the Stone and Jewel of the Nile. Anyway. Right, so anyway, they're heading through the uh, the jungle and uh, a gorilla arrives. Here it is. Um, and he says, don't move if you run, you know, it'll chase you. So he stands his ground. You don't look him in the eye or whatever. Uh, and then the gorilla just uh, just roars at him and stuff, and then then backs off as they do. And when he looks round, everybody had run away. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, where did you go? I ran away. There we go. Anyway, so off they go. And I think Amy uh, Amy looks at these gorillas and she's talking to him, saying, "Amy, good gorilla, giving it all that." Uh, there you go. And uh, they don't quite know what to make of her. Uh, I'm not sure about the eyes of the, of the silverback, by the way. I don't know. It looks the eyes on all the other gorillas look look fine, but for some reason he's got like narrow eyes, and I don't know why. Do silverbacks have narrow eyes? I don't know. It makes him look shifty. I don't know. But um, anyway, uh, oh, it takes off the uh, the speaking thing, and um, they they carry on their journey. Oh, and they stumble upon the camp from earlier that Bruce Campbell were in. There we go. And we see the, the bodies have all disappeared. You know, she saw loads of bodies earlier on, uh, but they've all disappeared, uh, along with most of the equipment. But um, um, oh, by the way, when 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 they came across the camp, let me go back again. <laughs> Hang on. Um, where is it? Here we go. Right, here, I've gone too far. Right, so they come walking round here, and this... Uh, a chap that uh, trips over some wire or something. It sets off a, an alarm, a perimeter alarm. There we go. Down he goes. And, oh, I've just tripped over. He just stays there forever. So, oh, I'm sitting here now. That's it. And everybody's looking at stuff. I'm not checking him to see if he's all right. Um, but he's just lying there. <laughs> uh, maybe he gets back up again. I don't know. Oh, he has. He's got back up there, look, I think. Anyway. But he just lied there for ages. Oh, whatever. Anyway, right, so they're carrying on. They found the camp, and um, there we go. They found the lost city of Zinge with some buildings and stuff. There it is. And so um, Tim Curry is, there we go, is vindicated. It is the city of Zinge. All my life I have searched this, and all that stuff. Uh, there it is, look. Um, uh, the kind, the base, the design on um, Sumerian, Egyptian, and a little bit of, um, as I said, um, oh, I've forgotten the name of it now. Um, Angkor Wat, um, just in the the way that the trees and the roots of the trees are like growing through the buildings and stuff. But it's mostly Egyptian and Sumerian for some reason. I don't know why Sumerian. What's King Solomon got to do with Sumeria? I don't know. What's it got to do with Egypt? I don't know either. Anyway, uh, yes, uh, just a bit on cone heads. Yes, they've got cone heads, haven't they? Maybe it's uh, Dan Aykroyd. <laughs> anyway, he gets his ring out. He says, the eyes, the eyes, the same. And um, right, so in the go. Amy's there. She's she's not happy. She's seeing that. Look, remember, she's had nightmares about this stuff. There we go. So she's... Uh, a bit nervous, as we can tell. Still not see one of them big millipedes. Uh, this is all a set on at Paramount, isn't it? You can tell. You can tell it's in a studio. Right, so they're going in and exploring. Because that's what they do in these films. And um, they're telling them all about the diamond mine and all that. It, for King Solomon and... Well, you know where did every why was it abandoned and um some, somebody suggests i think it's um munro kelly says maybe they dried up he says no the diamonds are here etc 
Uh, they go, the diamonds flow to the king of king kingdom of Solomon. He goes, no, the diamonds are here, and they are. But uh, oh, there he finds the uh, the Hershey bar that um, uh, Bruce Campbell were eating at the beginning before he something attacked him. Um, I had a Hershey bar, the bloody horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry, but they are. Um, anyway, right. So they're going in. They're all going to go in and explore inside. But um, Richard says, I'll wait out here with Amy and um, they have somebody uh, to stay with them as well. A, a chap called Claude. So anyway, so in they go, no, to the uh, carvings of um, some sort of primate. Look more like baboons, don't they, than gorillas, but never mind. Anyway, in they go. And then we go to the Egyptian hieroglyphs and stuff. I bet there's R2-D2 and C-3PO in here somewhere. I bet there is. <laughs> I bet there is. Um, the same hieroglyphics over and over, and he translates it. And but, um, We learn what it says repeatedly later on. Right, Richard's talking with this chap who's called Claude, and so they're not really getting on. Uh, and he says, you know, I want to go home. Um... Anyway, uh, Amy's having a look round. Um, yes, look at the gate addresses. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's what they need. Got to find uh, um, the, the 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 address to get. Yeah, we got yes that Stargate reference. Yes, uh, I'm all a dither. Uh, she's calling out for Charlie on the, in the hope that he's uh, still around. Um, anyway, so they're looking round, and then I think um, is it is it now? Uh, oh, ah, yes. Um, Richard comes running in, screaming, all covered in blood. Something something had happened outside. Here he is. Ah, and he's screaming. I think he just dies. I think he just do uh, ah. People see these gorillas and just die of fright. Uh, there he goes, dead. Um, and then a, a bloody gay, one of these grey gorillas comes in. Uh, hang on, oh, see, I've gone too far now. Da -da 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 -da. There you go, grey gorilla comes in. Hang on, and it throws the, put the head of poor Claude. I presume it's Claude, probably is. Uh, so we see a nice decapitated head, which is cool. And then the gorilla charges them. And then for some reason, it, it goes to like this crappy, you know, jerky slow motion rubbish. Yes, it's a death gorilla. <laughs> uh, a grey gorilla. Um, here, here it comes, charging them. And then when it attacks, look, it does that. They do that for some reason. And cut to this jerky slow motion blurriness. Probably to cover up some of the, you know... The, the the gorilla makeup and stuff I don't know but it looks rubbish they did it he also did it in Lord of the Rings did Peter Jackson didn't he he did a bit in that as well I don't know how they do it because it looks awful <laughs> but anyway anyway they shoot it and uh, kill it and uh, there you go but that's it it's all jerky so you can't see it properly see it, it, some others as well and they get people and but the you know the the fight them off. Here they go running off. You see the uh, uh, prints that they've left. Uh, imagine a bigger version of those things from Attack the Block, essentially. They were just black, black gorillas with glowy teeth, weren't they? <laughs> cool film is Attack the Block. Uh, oh, they could totally do Gorilla. Yes, they could, couldn't they? <laughs> Anyway, so, oh, aye. And then uh, Amy jumps in and nearly gets herself shot. And uh, obviously he recognises her. She's arrived. And uh, she looks She looks at the uh, at the dead grey gorilla and uh, rejoins them. But then they're being watched. Look. Dun, dun, dun. So, right. Oh, they find the, is that... Uh, is that Claude? Uh, has he got no head? He should have no head. I can see a head there. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, they're working on a sequel to that, aren't they? Uh, not that I think it'll be good. Uh, Attack the Block. I'd heard the one as well. I'd heard they were working on a sequel. 
Uh, but it was a while ago. I suppose like lockdown and all that other stuff, you know, and the lot of strikes and stuff. I suppose that's put the mockers on that. I suppose, but we'll see. Won't we? We'll see what happens. Anyway, there we go. That's why the diamonds were never found. The killer eight myth is true. Oh, and Peter Elliot saying, oh, "I can't believe it." Anyway, they're getting ready now. They're setting up the camp, and they've got they're going full aliens mode. <laughs> So, oh, he's putting the uh, the speaking thing onto Amy. Um, they're going full aliens mode because they've got automatic machine guns uh, and infrared lights and a laser grid and everything. Um, so they're just waiting for the attack. They must know it's coming, and uh, she's got all this equipment so they can see, you know, see in the dark and all that. And uh, they're testing the. Uh, uh, perimeter of the, of the apes, the grey apes, and um, there we go. He sees them moving about in the in in the jungle. There we go. It all kicks off. There's flares going off and everything, and the guns are firing and all that jazz. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, uh, hang on, where were we? Um, Yes, they are. Still hoping it will be, but no breath holding. Yeah, we'll see, won't we? Uh, attack the block sequel we're on about. The lower my expectations, the better it will feel if it's good. Exactly. Don't build up your expectations. <laughs> anyway, so the shooting at these gorillas and stuff that are attacking them, up there, lurking about, not showing themselves uh, much. There you go. Automatic machine gun shooting at them. <laughs> Bad mate. Uh, this were after aliens, <laughs> and then they go away. They go away. He says they've gone, and then he says so. But we're leaving at first light. And then um, Tim Curry says he translated as hieroglyphs, and he says we're watching you. Uh, there you go. Um, so right. So next day, the obviously the gorillas never came back, and they're packing up. They're going. And uh, we learn that some some of the people are missing. Uh, Amy's missing, and Peter says he's going to go and find Amy. And Monroe Kelly says humans, people come first, then gorillas. You know, we're going to find us our people, uh, and then we'll look for Amy. So he says, okay, whatever. Uh, so, but Amy's gone to have a look at these other gorillas. There, there she is. She's looking at them. Uh, Saying hello, I suppose. Hello, I'm Amy. Good gorilla. <laughs> hey. Do you know the Tim Curry space scene? Everybody knows it except me, probably. Anyway. Right. So they're looking for the missing people that have disappeared in the night. Um, oh, we see some of the hieroglyphs showing the, the gorillas wearing clothes. In the book, apparently, I've not read the book, but in the book, apparently, uh, the, the gorillas that we see, that are ga the guardians of the mine, are uh, somehow, I don't know, did King Solomon have DNA splicing technology? I don't know, but they had they were a mixture of uh, chimps, gorillas, and humans. Uh, but I've not read the book, so I don't know. I'm, I'm sure he explains it all. Does, um, uh, what's his face? Michael Crichton. Anyway, but they were seeing the gorillas killing people. Anyway, and the soup, so the super violent gorillas. Oh, and, they, and the the eat the they eat the local gorillas. Uh, these are the bones of gorillas, normal ones. Um, the, the these gorillas must think themselves lucky. Uh, meanwhile, the uh, volcanoes burst into life. Look. In the background. Uh, now what's happening here? Oh, look, and stuff's falling. It's just like Indiana Jones. People are getting killed because they're getting crushed under falling statues and rocks. And then they all fall down into another tunnel. Uh, have you read any of uh, the Crichton's novels? I've only read one that isn't a movie. I've read Jurassic World. Um, no, Lost World. Uh, you know, sequel to Jurassic Park. Uh, have we read any others? <laughs> I think that might be the only one I've read. Lost World. 
think. I'm sure I remember seeing Congo. Maybe maybe a friend had it. I remember seeing the book, but I've never read the book. But I remember picking it up at some point, and but I've never read it. But uh, anyway, so I think the only one I've read is Lost World. I think it was all right. Not much like the film, to be completely honest. But apparently Jurassic Park was not much like the the book, was it? Anyway, anyway, they fall down through into a, a, a subterranean tunnel. We learn it's a lava tube. And uh, they find, there we go, they find Tim Curry. And um, uh, he'd gone missing. He was trying to find the mines. Anyway, so they carry on. Uh, Amy's back at the um, at the tent. And she, she's not got her stuff on, has she? No. So she obviously at some point he's taken, he put all the talking thing stuff on her last night. And and he must have taken it all off again, and now she's going to put it all back on. So she's a super clever ape. There you go. She's grabbing it all. Look, she must know how to put it on and do all the switches and whatever. I don't know, but she does. <laughs> so she's the most amazing gorilla ever. Uh, as um, Eddie, I forgot his name. Eddie Vento said earlier on, "Is the the money hairs on the back of my neck and be going woo woo woo." <laughs> A talking gorilla. Anyway, right, they found the mine. They, here we go, they enter the mine. Uh, obviously a set. Um, and it, it, when you're going in, it looks like it's a, you know, like a, they're in like a tunnel or something like that. But as they go in, we see that there's no, there we go, we can see the sky and the volcano. Uh, but it just, for some reason, it still seems claustrophobic, I suppose, because it goes over, I suppose. But anyway. Uh, this is where the uh, the grey gorillas live, um, and we see all all um, diamonds. There we go, diamonds all over the the ground. Um, also, they're not real diamonds in this film. Uh, it says here what they are. And I've forgotten. <laughs> where did I read it? Um, just bear with me. There we go. The diamonds in quotes. Used for the scenes during the climax of the movie were actually Herkimer diamonds borrowed from the Herkimer diamond mines of Middleville, New York. They are doubly terminated, two-ended quartz crystals that are found in only two places in the world. Um, they were the only gems that would look enough like diamonds and be that large. As a kind of tribute, Tim Curry's character's first name is Herker uh, Herkimer. Uh, his character does not appear in, in the Michael Crichton novel upon which the movie was based. There we go. So there we go. Uh, you'd think they'd just like, use plastic or something, wouldn't you? But, I don't know. <laughs> They're actually real gems, quartz. Uh, so he says, there, look, the diamonds. And he picks one up and gives it a big kiss. <laughs> Eating up the scenery. Every word of it was absolutely true. Uh, and it says, I think you should put that down because the, uh, there we go, the lurking look is there. We <clears throat> are all growling and stuff. Uh, but he's picking them all up. He said, everybody fill fill your pockets and everything with these diamonds. But look, they've arrived of the gorillas and the cool suits. But um, Stan Winston didn't want them lit like this. He wanted them to be more hidden. Uh, to make him more menacing, but for some reason Frank Marshall just wanted you know bright, brightly lit, but uh, they still look fine to me. But uh, anyway, there it is, and um, he's trying to get away. He drops the diamonds, but that's no good. They're still going to get him. Uh, everybody's running for their lives, basically. They don't go and save poor Herkimer. He gets got by the uh, the gorillas. Uh, they go running off, and. Um, so they start shooting. I think I've seen poor poor Herkimer gets his uh, head bashed in um, in a minute. Uh, here we go. He's going to get his head bashed in in a minute. Goes, ah, bro, scary. <laughs> Squish. Uh, so anyway, all these apes are coming out and jumping about and shooting them and they're running there and they get trapped. The volcanoes, there's more earthquakes and stuff going on now, so that's why all rocks are falling and stuff. And um, uh, is this Kahiga? Yeah, uh, is um, Munro Kelly's sort of like right hand man Kahiga's getting ripped apart by the uh, by the gorillas. 
So that's why he's looking like that. Um, so anyway, so we've got this. So the shooting gorillas left, left, right, and centre. There must be hundreds of the buggers. Anyway, Karen finds Bruce Campbell. She finds Charlie. Uh, she's calling out for him. There he is, quite dead. Uh, human skeletons here. Uh, outside there were um, uh, gorilla ones, weren't there? We've got, got uh, human skeletons in here. So are these skeletons from the days of the mine, or are these? Explorers that have come in over the years. Uh, I suspect they might be. I suspect they might be explorers. Is that is that wearing armour? Could be, couldn't it? Could be. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. So she's found him. He's dead, and uh, he's got a big, um, a big diamond in his hand. By the way, they're in a big diamond. They go through this door, and um, yes, wearing ash clothes, no less. It is very, yeah, very. Uh, <laughs> What he's wearing is very evil daddy, isn't it? Um, he actually, um, Bruce Campbell actually auditioned for the part of Peter Elliot, but he didn't get that. Um, I thought it'd have been great as Peter Elliot, you know, as the main character. They should have done. It's Bruce Campbell, after all. And he could have said groovy at one point, <laughs> but he didn't. Never mind. Uh, this room that they're in, it's actually a big giant diamond. It's a geode, and they're in a giant diamond. So, anyway... And we can see it's all rumbling. There you go. The volcano's erupting. Uh, this were all. This isn't a real volcano, by the way. This is a, a miniature. Um, they recreated it. Um, they, they got like plates of the actual the volcano in uh, Central America, um, but they like, built like a blue screen miniature um, and used like balloons filled with you know this fine powder and shot them at high speed of them bursting and uh, it looks like uh, looks like the volcano erupting anyway I'm campaigning for Bruce to play Clayface in James Gunn's DC movies uh, yeah okay <laughs> your campaign is it a, a genuine campaign you're doing <laughs> on the on, on the internet or are they actually going down to DC studios and demonstrating with placards and stuff Bruce for Clayface. <laughs> hey dear. Which I think you should do. Anyway, so here we go. So the volcano's erupting. There it goes. Oh, there it did. Um, anyway, they're, they're, getting they're getting trapped. You know, there's no way out. So they've got to fight their way back through the... Uh, there we go, through the... Uh, the gorillas. They're almost out of... Um, out of ammo. I'll just make sure we're still going. Did it? Did it? Oh dear! Oh, about me. Are we still going on Rumble? Yes, we are. And on Twitch as well, right? Uh, and Karen says, "Buy me two minutes." And I thought, "Bloody two minutes is a long time, isn't it?" When you got killer gorillas charging at you. But anyway, off she goes. There they are. Look. Uh, she runs back in and uh, back to uh, to poor Charlie Travis and um, most of this. Um, Oh, something else there in a the T-shirt. Um, this bag here, it's got the laser gun that we saw er earlier on. Um, so, Bruce, uh, and they said Bruce Willis then, uh, Bruce Campbell, we saw him firing it earlier on, that laser thing. It's, you know, communications device. So she gets that out. See, they're shooting, you know, the gorillas. And she grabs the, uh, they're shooting away, and she grabs the, the diamond from Bruce Campbell's dead, cold, dead hands, and gets the the diamond out of the stone that it's that it's in. And um, luckily, it just fits in the the laser gun thing. It must just be the right shape and everything, you know, to amplify the laser or whatever. I don't know, but uh, oh my, yes, Peter gets grabbed by the the apes. The, the baddie apes and thrown and uh, he's out of oh, he's nearly out of ammo or whatever so they're all circling around Peter there you go she grabs that and breaks it open and there's a lovely nice diamond in it look oh lovely look and uh, she puts it in the gun it just fits nicely uh, oh hello Scottish Gate guy <laughs> uh, welcome to the show we're getting near the end now 
Uh, sorry, Joshua. Uh, my Crichton reads uh, Jurassic Park, Lost World, Sphere. Uh, I like that film, Sphere. Uh, Eaters of the Dead. Yes, 13th Warrior. I like that one. Uh, Timeline, The Terminal Man. Cool. I say, I've only read Lost World of his books, I think. Uh, anyway. Um, I feel like I've read Timeline. Honestly, can't remember. The only one I know I read is Next. Want that? Um, there were um, a Denzel Washington film called Next. That's like slightly time travelly. It can see something like so many minutes into the future or something like that. Or it Denzel Washington or it Nicolas Cage. <laughs> Not much difference, is there? Anyway, I don't I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, you think um Peter's done for here is surrounded by these grey ape hybrid things, whatever. But luckily Amy arrives. Uh, just as they're gonna get him, they go here. She comes and rah, look, she's roaring at him, um, and then she starts talking to him. She jumps down. Uh, there we go. And she's saying, "Bad gorillas, bad gorillas," and uh, said so they don't know what to make of it. A talking gorilla, um, and instead of just attacking, you know, we saw gorilla bones and stuff outside, but uh, instead of just attacking her and ripping her apart like they did with other normal gorillas. Maybe they're just so confused that she can talk. I don't know. But um, she, uh, you know, growls at him at the back off. And uh, there you go. She's uh, holding Peter, saying, Amy, mother. And they don't know what to do. There you go. They're just looking. And um, then um, Karen comes out with her laser gun now. They've got that gonna go on the endangered species list and she activate there we go. and says what's that says, it's the latest thing in communications uh, but i suppose it could be you know because they were, they were saying that you can fry a hot dog on a microwave tower you know a, what, what do you call it a, a, a cell phone tower <laughs> anyway uh, different next. Uh, this book was about genetic monkey business. Oh, right, the movie. Oh, was it Nick Nicholas Cage? Denzel Moore's Deja Vu. See, similar, similar things. All it's all m- munched up in my stupid brain. It's all the same. <laughs> anyway, so she's uh, shooting away at these uh, at these apes. Look, uh, with a super duper laser. Uh, it is kind of cool. I must admit. Should have should have done it longer. <laughs> And uh, so it gives them clearing a path for them so they can get out. Um, oh, poor ape, look, I'll cut in half. Um, anyway, so they go running out, and then she continues shooting at them with her laser gun. Kind of reminds me of the laser, in laser seen the black hole, but that's no, by the by. Anyway, they get out, but then the volcano erupts properly this time. Um... I said, not CG. I thought, well, particularly there's one scene that I, that I thought was CG, but apparently it's not. Anyway. Um, that thing does communicate. Yes, it communicates death. <laughs> but anyway, here, here comes the lava bursting out. Uh, not CG lava, apparently. Uh, they used... Um, oh, what did they use? There's some scenes that I think it's got, that's got to be CG. Maybe there's like CG... Altered slightly. Um, what did it say they use? Um, <sighs> I've seen it somewhere. I've forgotten what they used. There we go. Methyl cellulose. That's what they used. Which is this this liquid that they can, depending on how you mix it, it can be like really thin or, or thick and gloopy or whatever. But that's what they use for lava. And it was like um, a clear liquid. Um, when they shot it, it was like a clear liquid. And then in editing and in the computers and stuff, they could change it to make it look red or orange like lava. Anyway, so here it comes. There's the lava. All bursting out of the ground. And there we go. Oh, this is the... And um, I thought this was CG lava. Apparently it's not. It's this methyl cellulose stuff. But there's, there's some bits, uh, particularly a bit coming up. Um, uh, they're all jumping. By the way, they're all jumping into the... Uh, <laughs> Into the lava for some reason. Maybe they're just falling. But some of them are definitely jumping. Oh, like that one, for instance. Uh, I suppose because it's all blowing up behind them as well. So, there they go. Um, all lava behind them. 
have I missed a bit? There's a bit that um, it looked like CG to me. Um, maybe we're going to see it in a minute. I don't know. Uh, no, we've missed it. Oh, let's go back again. Do, 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 do. Is it this one? Yeah. Go back again. <laughs> oh, this one. It's this one. This one looks like CG to me. Um, maybe that's not the background bit there, but this that goes over this ape here. That definitely looks like CG, that bit, doesn't it? Because it goes over it. It's like a bloody horter. It goes over it like a horter, doesn't it? But uh, <laughs> no kill I. Uh, still better than Volcano LA. Uh, I've seen that once. I just remember a fella... Jumping into the lava, <laughs> but I can't remember. It's Tommy Lee Jones, isn't it? I've seen it once. Dante's Peak. Now that's a good volcano film. I like that film. Anyway, right. So the volcano's all erupting, and the apes are getting killed by the lava. Um, uh, they're escaping. There's only them three left now, isn't there? There's only Munro, Kelly, and uh, Karen, and Peter, and Amy left. But they're running for their lives. There we go. Everything's shaking and there's going to be all... Um, uh, there we go. It's all collapsing and then the not CG lava's coming down. It it, said, it shows how they did that on the, in the behind-the-scenes thing. They actually that said they filmed this. This is on the set at, uh, at um, Paramount. But ILM, they, they built a blue screen replica of it. <laughs> you know, it did replicated all the boulders and all the temple and stuff I just ran the uh, methyl cellulose mixture down it at high speed and stuff and uh, that's how they did it says not CG uh, which surprised me uh, there's Amy running for her life um, alright and then they uh, the ground opens up um, the Force Awakens style <laughs> uh, there you go. He goes running. I presume that's a stunt man on the air cannon, whatever trampoline. Uh, there he is, over the lava, just like uh, Commander Krug uh, in uh, Commander Krug in uh, Star Trek Three. <laughs> uh, there he is. But Amy doesn't say, "I have had enough of you." In this, she lets him climb up. Still not see one of them big millipedes. But never mind. Uh, the scene in the subway tunnels when they jump over into the lava. Who was that bad? Um, yeah, that's the only bit I remember about it. <laughs> that volcano film with Tommy Lee Jones. That was another example, by the way. I was on about it a, a few films ago. Where films tend, films of the same or similar themes tend to come out at the same time, don't they? We were talking about it. And I was on about Armageddon and Deep Impact and Leviathan and Deep Star Six and The Abyss and Volcano and Deep um, um, the other one, Dante's Peak. Anyway, that was another example. Right, where were we? Keep going. Uh, they're separated now from um, Munro, Kelly and Karen. Uh, this, the, the earth has opened up. Uh, or is it doing it now? Oh, no, it's doing it now. There we go. The earth opens up there. So now they're separated. So here they come. Uh, there they are. And they're trapped on the other side of the broiling pit. Uh, the ones we just mentioned next and Deja Vu were close. Yes, yes. That's, that's weird, isn't it? It's weird, isn't it? Or maybe it's not. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, she gets a laser out again. She looks at a tree. Um, here we go. She says, hang on. She sees a tree that's big enough. And she gets a laser out. And um, there we go. <laughs> Cuts through the tree. Black hole style. Because they do that in the black hole as well. I'm going to do that one of these days. And um, Luckily, the tree falls the right way. Because she, she knows how to wield that laser. And uh, luckily, it doesn't splatter them. But anyway, they use the tree to get across. King Kong style -y. Um These films have always got to have a running across a tree and, and falling over halfway, haven't they? They've always got to have that, haven't they? Um, so Amy goes, obviously Peter goes. Obviously he stumbles, because you've got to. 
It must be a rule in Hollywood. If you're running over a, a gorge on a tree or a bridge or whatever, you've got to stumble halfway. It's a rule. Um, and there's all the stuff colla uh, collapsing. There you go. Look, look, look. Uh, there he goes. There you go. You've always got to stumble halfway across. For drama. Uh, right, so they get across and um, they keep going. Get to higher ground. Just not the higher ground that's blowing up <laughs> nearby. Uh, deep rise and earlier resurrection. The swimming underwater scenes. Yeah, but that's that's a bit of a stretch though, isn't it? <laughs> Saying the similar films. <laughs> but yes, they both did have that as well. Anyway. I like Alien Resurrection. I don't, that gets another film that gets, you know, in my opinion, wrongly lambasted, uh, like this one did. Uh, but I like Alien Resurrection. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Anyway. Uh, where were we? Right, so anyway, so the jungle's burning, blah, blah, blah. All the gorillas are dead. Um, they're running out. Uh, they come across the uh, the wreckage that they found earlier. Uh and like LXG, yes, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. I like that as well. I like that as well. That's a good film. Another one, unfairly lambasted. That's today's word. <laughs> anyway, right, they get back to this plane that uh, crashed earlier on. And remember, it had a balloon. She says, get the yellow case. Um, it's got um yellow case with a red stripe. It's got a balloon. So, um, Peter's looking for Amy. Um, he's Oh, she's getting through... They had, a, obviously, been a plane full of new equipment. They've got a satellite thing. So she gets back in touch with uh, Travis. Uh, there we go. And he says, oh, I thought you were dead. Uh, so I sent another team. And um, she says, you know, Charles was killed. The bad news, Charles was killed. And he says, did you get the diamond? That's all he's bothered about. There you go. And uh, she says, yes. And then she says, remember what I told you earlier on? If you sent me, you know, just to find some diamond and not to find Charlie, I'd make you regret it. Um, and he says, oh, yeah, of course I'm upset, but, you know, what's done is done, etc. But, uh, no, she's going to blow up his satellite with the super-duper laser, the diamond laser, whatever the hell it is in there. Anyway, I like the actual Alien movies so far. Prometheus and Covenant do not count. No, they don't. <laughs> well, not Covenant. I didn't mind Prometheus. Um, um, but Covenant, I can't stand Covenant. But Prometheus, I didn't mind it. It looked nice. It was a bit stupid, but uh, it was, I didn't mind it. My mate hates it. <laughs> Excuse me. But he won't do a show with me. I can't get him to appear on a show with me. Uh, I keep saying we, we should do a, a show together. Because he likes his films and stuff, does my mate, Simon. Uh, but he won't come on with me. He won't do it. So anyway, he has appeared briefly in one of me. I think it was a, a Friday night appointment with Fear. He were here when they were doing it, and he was sitting in the background. Uh, and just occasionally shouted something, but he won't actually sit on camera with me. Anyway, anyway, the cast in both movies were among the stupidest in the history of film. Yes, they were. <laughs> they were. <laughs> I mean, how did in Prometheus? How did they manage to get lost? In, in you know, when they went into that structure, whatever the hell it was, where the engineer was. Um, somehow they get lost, but yet he's got this mapping technology. So how could they get lost? The videos. But that's, that's another film. Blur his face and change his voice, yes. Yes, I said, this is my friend. We will call him Terence. He has asked not to be identified, so I've blurred his face and changed his voice. <laughs> Sound like uh, Stephen Hawking or whatever, and make or make him a mask. Hey dear. Anyway, back to Karen. Yeah, he won't. He won't do it with me. But uh, I think he thinks this is my thing that I do, and he doesn't want to interfere. And I, I don't know. Anyway, that's by the by. Right, Karen's gonna put. Uh, she's gonna. She says, I'm going, I'm going to phone the satellite because the satellite's number is in the chip or whatever. And um, she says, what, what will happen if I fire this laser at the satellite? There we go. This is for you, Charlie. And, uh, and uh, hang on. 
There we go. And pew! Cool! Bet Elon Musk wants one of these. I bet he's working on a super duper space laser. I bet he is. I bet he is. Uh, hang on. Uh, a black mask. I don't know. Uh, stage fright for the millions watching around the world. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Anyway, if, if I did know that millions were watching, I'd probably just go, oh, I can't speak. Anyway. Like Hank Scorpio. That name rings a bell, and I can't think where from. Anyway. Uh, yes, the legs, uh, liz, a bit pronounced with a Z, wouldn't it? Like, you know, like a xylophone. That's how we'd say it, liz, because uh, it's, Elon Musk got to have an X in it, hasn't it? <laughs> coming mid-2025. Everything's coming mid-2025. Anyway, she's destroyed his uh, satellite, so he's, he's angry about that. Right, Peter's looking for Amy. Right, he finds her, and she's found the other gorillas. And they're talking in sign language because she ain't got a talking thing on anymore. She must have taken it off. but uh, Or maybe he took it off. I can't remember. But anyway. Uh, she's going... Oh, she gives him a flower. Look, she picks a flower for him and gives it to him. Because she gave him a flower at the beginning of the film. Just to show what this is. You know, it's poetry, rhymes, and all that. And so they, they love each other. There we go. Africa's your mother, etc. So she's going to live with the other gorillas. So off she goes. There she goes. In with the with the other gorillas, the big silver back. No, it's not as from Heel versus Babyface. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, the uh, this is what I thought was CG. Uh, this volcano erupted here. It looks very CG to me, but apparently it's not. It's practical, you know, filmed in slow motion, you know, uh, models and stuff. It looks cool. I think it does anyway. Hank Scorpio is one of my favourite episodes of The Simpsons. He's basically a Bond villain. That's probably where I've seen it, yes. I knew it rung a bell. Right, so off she goes. And um, so she disappears into the uh, the forest with her new family, probably teaching them how to speak. Uh, and they end up riding horses and, um, you know, killing people and hunting humans and stuff. Uh, in Planet of the Apes. That's what's going to happen next. That's the sequel to Congo. Is uh, Dawn of the... Pl was it right? What was the first one? Rise of the Planet of the Apes. <laughs> there we go. The volcano erupts a bit more, makes a bit more noise and distracts them. So they look around and when they look back, she's gone. Uh, there. No, not there anymore. So she's gone. Hopefully they won't die in the, the toxic fumes and stuff coming off the volcano. I don't know. But... Right, right. So they get in the balloon. Uh, wonder if it'd be funny if it were like a nimble one. You remember nimble? Was that a thing in America? I don't know. Uh, in the 70s, I think it was the 70s, when I was a kid, a lot of adverts for nimble, which were like a, a low-calorie bread, and they always had balloons. <laughs> they had there was a balloon with nimble on the side of it. Whatever happened to nimble? Anyway, whatever. So, off they go, rising into the, above the Serengeti, rising like a Olympus. Uh, or is it a Nikon? I don't know. Or it could be a Canon. <laughs> uh, there you go. Amy's watching him. He's got the flower. And uh, Karen, she takes the diamond out of the laser laser gun. I'd have just kept it. Just cause, you know, I'd have just kept that laser gun. You know, because it's just a cool laser gun, isn't it? But she says to him, throw this away for me, will you, Peter? Because obviously she doesn't trust herself to let it go. All she has to do is just drop it, doesn't she? But maybe she can't bring herself, you know, I can't, I can't let go, it's a big massive diamond. Because, you know, diamonds are a girl's best friend. Anyway, so he throws it. There you go, because he doesn't care about uh, monetary things. And um, Monroe Kelly says, ouch, there we go. That probably worth $150 or thereabouts. Anyway. They're so screwed for a hot air balloon near an eruptive volcano. Not to mention the Zaire Air Force and stuff has been down in planes left, right and centre, haven't they? <laughs> they'll not dodge, unless they've got some uh, flare guns, they'll not dodge any missiles, will they? Come uh, to Google, you still get it. Hovis Nimble Hole Meal. All oh, right. Very good. Very good. I remember it from when I was a kid, Nimble. Anyway. I don't know what it was like. We never got it because it was expensive bread. We always got cheap bread when I was a kid. 
Right, so there we go. Amy's with her um, gorilla family. Um, this is probably in California somewhere, probably. But uh, off they go, scampering off into the jungle or whatever. Uh, and then we see it was directed by Frank Marshall. Then we get the credits. There we go. Blah, blah, blah. They're floating off to their fate, whatever the hell that is. <laughs> Do they make it home? Don't know. Do they get shot down? Don't know. <sighs> but we'll assume that they're fine and they make it back and everybody live happily ever after. But there we go. There we go. So there we go. A good. I like Congo. It is a, a good film. And some of the ape suits are, uh, you know, not the best, but uh, you know, the fine, the fine. But uh, anyway, right. So we'll leave it there. That's uh, the end of Congo. Congo two, dead by dawn. <laughs> yes, they probably were. They probably were dead by dawn. Anyway, I get rid of that. Make myself big again. I like. I, I think it's a great film. I don't know why it got such a. Uh, um, a critical pasting because I don't think there's anything wrong with it to be honest I think it's a good a good adventure yarn it's an old fashioned adventure yarn as I said it's um, supposed to be like the old adventures of from the 30s and 40s and 50s and the King Solomon's Mines and all that stuff um, Alan Quatermain etc uh, all those adventures with the uh, native um, porters with the stuff on the heads and all that that's what they want uh, Congo 3 around Africa in 80 pieces, yes. <laughs> that's what it'll be. That's what's going to happen to them. They're going to get, get hacked to bits. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Right. We're done. We'll leave it there. So give Congo a whirl. I don't know if it's on any streaming services. I've got the DVD. Uh, I think it's out on Blu-ray. I, I think I didn't get the Blu-ray because I think it was expensive <laughs> i think for i thought i'm not paying that for it i don't like it that much um uh i thought it might be more appreciated now 29 percent audience on rotten tomatoes yeah that's it for some reason people don't like this film i don't know why i think it's a good adventure yarn and it's you know it's it's harmless fun i think it is anyway and it's got tim curry in it and who doesn't love tim curry uh putting on a great accent and uh, and apparently, it's Ernie Hudson's favourite role that he's ever played. So there you go. So there you go. Is it on Pluto? All oh, right, cool. Cool. I dig it. Lots of fun. It is. It is a, a really, really fun film. It's not the best film ever made, you know, but it's a lot of fun. That's why I've included it. You know, if I didn't like it, I wouldn't have done it on Magnificent Mondays, would I? My favourite movies. Woohoo! And it is one of my favourite movies. It's up there. It is up there. Right. What's coming up next? Um, Friday, we're doing... I've forgotten. What am I doing on Friday? Oh, hi. Yes, Friday. <laughs> uh, we're going back to Hammer Film Times uh, in Friday Night Appointment with Fear. Uh, we're doing The Gorgon uh, from 1964. So I thought I'd do that. we'll do an old horror film for a change. So that's fun. It's kind of a tragic film. Well, me and a bit sad, but um, it's good. It's good. Uh, Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Wednesday, I'll have my new stream. Uh, uh, I did watch a few groaners over the weekend. Derailed, Brain Dead, nineteen ninety. Not Peter Jackson. No, not that one. <laughs> uh, Shadow Zone. I don't think I've seen any of them. Don't think I've seen any of them. I might know that Brain Dead one rings a bell though, and not the Peter Jackson one. Uh, for some reason, I've got an image of the the VHS cover on the shelf at the video, you know, library store, whatever you want to call it. I'm thinking of dead and buried. I could be thinking of dead and buried. I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Uh, Wednesday for news. Um, uh, Shadow Zone has Kai Wynn, does it? Um, Louise Fletcher. Uh, there you go. Anyway, next Monday, we're doing... Hang on. I've set it up already. Hang on. Where's the puddy? There we go. 
Uh, next Monday, we're doing Firefox down in Clint Eastwood, not Heartbreak Ridge, which we might do at one point, but uh, this is a double feature, you see. <laughs> we're doing Firefox down in Clint Eastwood. So maybe that'll uh, lure Sci-Fi Quest uh, back out of his... Uh... <laughs> His exile or whatever is whatever's, whatever's he's going on with him, I don't know. Uh, Brain Dead has Bill Pullman, uh, Bills Pullman and Paxton. Cool, all star cast. Let's have a look for that. Uh, Firefox is good stuff. Yes, I went to see that at the cinema when I was a kid, 1982. How old were I? 15. Um, and it was a, when I was a kid, it was a double A certificate, which meant 14 and over could go and see it. So I snuck in, <laughs> uh, you know. Just, just over the wire, I could go see it, legally. Anyway, uh, I'll break out that web browser. Yes, we've all got to watch it on the Firefox web browser. <laughs> <laughs> it's good as Firefox with the I forgot, MiG-31. And that's, he is a MiG-31 now, isn't there? I think it was the MiG-31, wasn't it? Hang on, let me check. <laughs> just let me check. Yeah. Not that I know anything about MIGs. Firefox, 1982. Yes, the MIG-31. Uh, that's the that's the easy one now, isn't there? A real life one, but I don't know if they call it a Firefox. Um, I'm sure I'm sure that I'm sure there is a real one. Uh, let's look that up. Uh, it's not a Max 6 aircraft anyway. MIG 31. Uh, Right, the MiG-31 is the fastest operational combat aircraft in the world. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, it's the Mikoyan MiG-31 Foxhound. Um, what, can that, can, what can that get up to? Um, does it say how fast it can go? But it can get to Max 6. Uh, I was going to watch that late night with the devil this weekend, but it doesn't stream until the 19th. Yes, I'm looking forward to seeing that, because it's supposedly got a bit of a found footage feel to it, hasn't it? Apparently. But uh, anyway. Uh, and then it's a Shudder exclusive. I don't have Shudder. I've got enough um, streaming services. I don't want another one. I mean, I subscribe to MGM and I never bloody watch it. Keep meaning to watch Stargate and keep forgetting. Anyway, how fast can these real life MiG 31s go? Does it say? Does it say? Does it say? Why don't it say how fast it can go? Specifications. Is it here? Speed. Mac, just under Mach 3, Mach 2.83 at 70,000 feet maximum speed. So it's not as good as the Firefox, the fictional MiG-31. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> I'm waffling. Uh, I'll get MGM as soon as they get off their butts and make new Stargate. Well, oh, it's coming, isn't it, according to uh, Sidetrack. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. You'd think there'd have been an announcement by now, wouldn't you, from Amazon? But maybe maybe it's coming. We'll see. Right. We'll leave it there. Firefox versus Stealth. That's another film I like. Did I, have I done Stealth? I think I have, haven't I? Have I? I think I've done Stealth, haven't I? I think I have. A while ago. I like Stealth. <laughs> Probably because you see Jessica Biel in a bikini. <laughs> Firefox is... Uh, Greater than stealth, is that is that the greater that I can never remember? Is that the greater than sign? I don't know. Uh, yes, you did it a while back. I thought so. Anyway, so that's next Monday, right? So we'll leave it there. Hang on, I take broken arrow over both. <laughs> it's a film I've seen for a while. John Travolta in it and uh, Christian Slater. Uh, that's a fun film as well. We haven't seen for a while. Anyway, right, I'm going now. So. We'll leave it there. So thanks, Joshua. Uh, Joshua Kanapke, Josh Temple and Wind Grace. And uh, we had Scottish Geek Guy as well, didn't we? Uh, briefly, earlier on. And anybody else popped in that I've not noticed? Because uh, it happens. It happens. Uh, no. I wonder why it echoed earlier on. I've noticed it's, it's done that before sometimes. And I don't know why it does it. 
weird, weird. Anyway, let's just have a quick check of the other streams, make sure there's no messages or chat things on the other streams. No, there isn't. No, there isn't. Right, never mind. Right, we'll leave it there. We will leave it there. Uh, toodles, folks. Have a great week. Yes, you too. I hope you all had a happy Easter. Take care, all. Don't be fooled today. Yes, you've still got part of your day, day to go, haven't you? April Fool's Day. Mine's nearly over. It's 11pm at night now. <laughs> of an hour left. To get some japes in. Right, so we'll leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you there. Thank you.